Sorry about that. Hello. Hi, guys. Welcome to Leave Reacts. Hope everyone's having a good day. I know I am. We are back with our um, Frank Friday video of the week, courtesy of our patron, Paul. Thank you, Paul. I appreciate you, man. Um, we're going to be listening to two tracks off of an album I have never listened to before. I'm not, gonna, not even going to lie. Um, we're going to do two tracks. The one he requested was Baby Take Your Teeth Out, but that is very short. So I added something to it. And um, it's going to be Be In My Video, because apparently that was a decent one that people have asked for, actually. I remember it coming up. Sorry, I had something else set up. Okay, add to VLC. Play. Oh, you little shit. Okay, all right, now we're good. Sorry about that. Uh, we do this every Friday. Frank Friday, obviously. 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Be there or uh, be triangle. I don't give a fuck. All right, let's go. <clears throat> Y'all are not subscribed. Please help a brother out. Click that icon right below my face and I'm excited to check this out because um, this is an album I've never heard of them or us um, that album cover is very interesting so I'm, I'm guessing this is gonna be a wild one all right so first up is baby take your teeth out and then be in my video by Frank Zappa three two one go thank you Paul Baby, take your teeth out and try it one time. Baby, take your teeth out and try it one time. Baby, take your teeth out and leave them on the kitchen table. Oh, well, baby, take your teeth out and try it one time. Baby, take your teeth out and leave them on the kitchen table. Oh, well, 1984. Baby, take your teeth out and it'll be fine. Baby, take your teeth out and it'll be fine. Baby, take your teeth out and there ain't nothing left to talk. So serious. Do Wop Frank song. <laughs> it's like Ruben in the Jeff. <laughs> Showing this somebody like Zappa for the first time. Light. 
This is the dawn of MTV. <laughs> That's funny. But he's talking about a different type of video. Do I not have anything else downloaded? You know what? I don't even give a shit. Where is it? Did I download it? I thought I did. Oh, well, never mind then. I was going to do another one, but I only downloaded those two. I saw that there was a version of Whipping Post, and I'm not going to lie. Sorry, Bonesy. I really wanted to do it. Um, I can't lie. <laughs> but um, I didn't want to add on like a bunch of extra stuff to Paul's request. Um, you know, because he only requested baby uh, take your teeth out. Um, Jesus fucking kids. Um, <laughs> it definitely felt like... Um, hold on one second. Sorry about that. Um, both kids are here today, so it's very loud. Um, the lineup. <laughs> um, Frank Zappa. On guitar and vocals. Hmm? What? Ray White on guitar and vocals. Steve Vai on guitar. Dweezil Zappa on guitar. Tommy Mars on keyboards. Bobby Martin on keyboard, saxophone, vocals, harmonica. George Duke on piano and vocals. Scott Thunes on the bass and the mini Moog. Um, Arthur Barrow on bass. Patrick O'Hearn on bass. So it could have been any of those guys. Ed Mann. Obviously on percussion, Chad Wackerman on drums, Ike Willis on vocal. Oh, hold on. Ike Willis, Napoleon, Murphy Brock, Roy Estrada, Johnny Guitar Watson, Moon Zappa, Bob Harris, and Thana Harris all on vocals. There you go. That's a mouthful. Um, I don't know exactly like who did what, obviously, because uh, these were two almost whimsical kind of feeling Zappa songs, especially that second one. I mean... <laughs> I mean, honestly, both of them were, and I, I love those songs by him that just make me laugh my ass off, you know what I mean? Sorry. If I have to leave this room one more time, I'm going to lose my fucking mind. I'm not even going to lie. All right. So back to the songs. Okay. So baby, take your teeth out. Um, obviously he's referring to something and the same thing would be in my video. Uh, Frank has always been a freak. He's a freaky Frank. Freaky Frank Friday, you know, <laughs> um, you know, and it kind of felt like uh, almost like a satirical take almost on like what he did with Ruben and the Jets, you know, because that was his like homage to the songs he grew up listening to and what he loved and stuff like that. Um, <laughs> and then this stuff, like, it's so hilarious to me, man, like the voices, you know, and there's so much great in instrumentation as well that's happening underneath everything. Like I always say, like, he is just like the master of layers. He's got so many different sounds happening at once, all perfectly arranged. And uh, the production is always flawless, dude. Um, yeah, and he has nothing to do with it. It's John M. on mastering and Mark Pinsky on, he was the chief engineer. Uh, yeah, every person he brings in to produce this stuff always sounds fantastic. Um, whoever was doing, I guess that was, I guess that's Ed Mann who was doing the, vibraphone or xylophone or glockenspiel whatever it was 
uh definitely uh <laughs> i mean how could you not love those songs they just instantly make you happy but like i said if you show that to um somebody who wasn't familiar with zappa or like you know anything like that they would be totally lost you know it's definitely a journey to get there with him and you guys told me that up front you said that it takes a while to get there. There's so much to get through that you would be surprised at how much, you know, material he has out and what he's done. He's done everything. You know, this is 1984. So this is, you know, uh, him playing with Dweezil and stuff like that. And I've heard, you know, I think a couple things, obviously, with him and Dweezil. But I don't know if he played what, you know, I'm saying there's so much going on. I don't know who's playing what. He's got so many people. So I don't know if that was Steve, if that was Frank. You know, there really wasn't that much guitar either to be honest it was mostly like the percussion um and then the uh george duke on the piano bobby martin keyboards tommy marr stuff like that like there definitely was guitar lines and stuff but it felt like the vocals and the percussion really drove these two tracks that are you know all the vocal, you know the harmonies and stuff between everybody which were very very interesting you know what i'm saying just the way that he pairs everyone's voices together and like I don't know just how their their vocal soup basically their harmony is very interesting um and no matter what frank is frank you know and <laughs> i've listened to so much of his music now that even though i haven't it's same thing with toll apparently jethro toll like i haven't even i mean i've made a dent in toll i don't i don't care what anybody says i definitely made a dent in toll but zappa i mean no i haven't i, I really i i've done a you know a little sliver probably but there's so much out there. Like, I didn't know this was an album. You know, he's got so many albums, man. It's crazy. I don't know how you guys keep up with him. You know, like Peter and all you guys who are like Zappa heads. You guys know everything. It's crazy. And even I'm, even me who picks up information pretty quickly, you know, it it's a lot to get through. It's almost as hard as like the Beatles. You know what I mean? Like the Beatles has, they have so much lore and little things that go into this. They were very documented. Frank kind of feels like the opposite where he wasn't as well documented, but he's got so much material that you can just go find out yourself, you know, and the, he's got a wonderful way about him and the way that he produces music and makes things, you know, he's always got it his tongue firmly in his cheek, you know, and he plays it so straight too that it just warms my heart, bro. <laughs> he's a Brit on the inside. I think he really does have that dry, just, you know, straight face sort of humor. And there's so much intelligence behind it too. Like he's a very intelligent dude. Um, I've actually been watching a few interviews of, with him because they've been popping up like in my... um. I guess you would call them shorts feed, I guess, whatever on YouTube. And I, I click them every time they pop up and he didn't, you know, you know, he, he does seem a little snarky, but I mean, that's not a bad thing in my, you know, in my world, <laughs> I think being snarky is a good thing. I think that's, you know, he's got some sly like wit to him and he's very quick and, but he also takes his time to think about things and give it a proper response. Like he has, a, he puts a lot of thought into everything he does. Um, and I've noticed that, you know, obviously I've picked up some things through the music, you know, obviously he's, uh, he was pretty out there, you know, with a couple things, but who isn't, you know, and I, he was a wonderful musician. His guitar skills outweigh, um, a lot of other people's skills, and that's not even including his songwriting skills, the, the conducting the orchestral stuff he does literally everything. I mean, like if there was ever a virtuoso or a maestro from, you know, the last generation, I guess you could say. Well, I don't know what generation Frank would be technically. I'm not good with those. I know I'm a millennial. That's it. But he is, I guess he was a a boomer. Was he a boomer or a baby boomer? I don't know. Sorry. At least he's not the silent generation. I don't know. That's like the 1920s, right? I don't know. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know the exact conditions of what, how Frank was raised, but I do know some details and such. And it's very fascinating to see somebody, you know, come through, um, it's actually similar a little bit to my story of just, you know, I, I grew up in a very uh, cultural, uh, culturally rich area, let's say, you know, there's a lot of different groups of people, lots of different cultures. Um, and I got exposed to all of them at a very young age, you know, from like Hindi people to African American people, you know, like I wasn't like, I was raised on a farm, but that farm was basically encircled by uh, not the best areas, shall we say. And, um, but at the same time, like, 
it was a great place for me to grow up because I, I learned so much and I picked up on so many different little things and it made me into the person I am today, you know, and I'm very unique. I've noticed that there's definitely nobody like me on this face, uh, on this face, on the face of the earth. You know, I've noticed that all the people I've met. Nope. I'm definitely a strange duck. But at least I can quack, so that's cool. Um, I would say that my favorite thing out of all of this would be uh, the vocals, the harmonies, um, especially in the second song. Uh, it definitely had a. It definitely reminded me of Ruben and the Jets at points, but I guess that's my only reference of this type of Zappa, you know. So that's why I probably say that. Um, maybe if I was exposed to more of the stuff that he does, like in this vein, I wouldn't feel that way, but it's still, I thought it was great though. It obviously made me crack up and I needed that today. Obviously you can tell. So thank you, uh, Paul. I appreciate that. And thank you everybody for watching. Thank you for joining me for another Frank Friday. Sorry, things were a little fragmented on our Frank Friday. Um, I just had to, uh, go tell them to be quiet basically because daddy's working. Daddy gotta go make them tips. <laughs> <sighs> Thanks for watching. Patreon, right here. <clears throat> oh, no, not today. Get the fuck out of here. Sorry, that AI camera is going to get me one day. Um, that's a, yeah, the picture's gone. Now, uh, there's a link in the description. Join the $15 tier or up. You get one free request a month. Uh, if you want to pick the next Frank Friday video, you can do that uh, through Patreon or through our PayPal. It's in the description. You can send a request in that way. Whatever you want to do, because I think I'm, I think I'm free after this. I, I'm, I don't think I have any other requests for him after this. So next Friday is going to be a dancing fool video or you pick it. So it's up to you, man. <laughs> Thanks for watching.